In this video, we're going to learn about how to find the gradient of the graph. Next, uh, how do you use the gradient and sub into the equation that's given in the instruction. And lastly, if they ask you to find the y-intersect, how do you go about doing it? I'm going to show you four examples, so hopefully you can follow through and watch the whole video to have a better idea of the various kind of graph and how you go about doing finding the gradient, so on and so forth. Now let's take a look at the first example here. It's a straight line with a constant positive gradient. And the typical question is as such, determine the gradient of your line and show clearly on your graph how you get this. That means to say there's some presentation on the graph beside the usual, the working that you do. Okay, many of you will remember your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this working has to be presented over here instead of like math sometimes you do the working here so for practical you have to do it in the space provided now strictly speaking there's no x and y in your graph but i mean if you're used to the formula it is okay to just write this and then continue with your substitution here now let's go back to the graph here now in general you know that the best fit line may not pass through all your existing points so the best is actually to locate two new points on the line okay and how far should the two new points be so the general rule is if you take a look at the graph here the first point and the last point is over here and the distance between the first and last point is as such so half the distance, there will be about this distance, as long as the two new points for gradient is about this gap, this distance apart, it should be fine. Next, the points must be easy to read. For example, if I were to choose this point because it's a nice intersection here, so I must put the coordinates here. So if you read the horizontal axis here, it will be 20 and the vertical axis here will be 900. So please do not swap it, all right? So the next point maybe is over here, which is a nice point for me to read and they are far apart. And the X coordinates will be 630, 3500. Next, there's one last thing that you need to do on your graph for the presentation and that's to draw the dotted triangle. All these presentations are important so as to let the marker check your coordinates for the gradient. So once they check that's correct, next they'll go to your working here. So you just sub in the value like what you do for math. So Y2 will be 3500 minus 900 over 630 minus 20. Now, always remember, do not make a mistake here. It's rise over run. So your vertical axis followed by your horizontal axis because many students make the mistake of swapping the two. So you'll get 2,600 over 610. And the least sig fig is three sig fig here. So the final answer, you just leave it in three sig fig. So 4.26. Now, if you are really unsure, I think in general, two or three sig fig is fine. Now, let's go to the next thing, which is the gradient of the, sorry, the units of the gradient. Now, it is good practice to actually put the gradient, okay? And especially if they ask for it, you definitely have to put. But not to worry, it's actually very simple. If you, you know that gradient is actually rise over run. So you just take whatever units that's in the rise which is s square cm over the units that's on the run which is cm square so if you were to simplify even though you have not seen this uh, units before it's fine so the s square still remains there and the cm here will be cancelled away so is second square slash cm or you can also write s square cm to a power of minus one is the same. So with this, the presentation on the graph paper plus the working here shown here with the correct sig fig and the units, you will get the two marks. Now the next thing is, once you get the gradient, usually the next question will ask you to sub the gradient into an equation. Now you may or may not uh, understand the equation but it doesn't matter just follow the instruction 
for example in this case they ask you to find the acceleration of free fall and this one uh, your theory will help because you, you know that your acceleration due to free fall is 10 meter per second square that is um, the theory that you have learned in class so here you just follow the instruction for pi square over the gradient all right so you just sub in the gradient 4.26 no need to worry about the units or that so you will get 9.268 so it's about 9.3 meter per second square because okay it is this unit is given or you should know that from your theory is meter per second square and you know that it's close to 10 so you're on the right track it's quite safe as long as yours is within the range now the last thing that we are going through is the y intersect if the question asks you to find the y intersect and for this case because we did not jump the scale all right so it, you can just conveniently read off the y intersect where the line cuts the vertical axis so in this case it's 800 so you just write down the value 800 uh, do not forget the units which is second square cm so that's rather straightforward but the next few examples here you have to pay attention because it depends on whether you jump the scale or not now for this second example okay it's very similar the graph the straight line that you have is here a constant negative gradient so i've already done up all the things so the two things you need to take note for gradient is the working with the correct substitution and you expect that your answer will be negative two or three sig fig with the correct units all right and another thing is the presentation remember two new points on the line make sure they are far apart more than half the distance of the first and last point so write the coordinates clearly with the dotted triangle for them to locate your points so that will give you the marks for the gradient now for this one once again just give you an example they this is given to you like i say you may or may not understand this doesn't matter just follow the instructions so this is just manipulation so g will be minus 4 pi squared over the gradient now for this case you will expect why is there a negative sign okay no need to worry because it's for you to cancel the negative uh, sign of the gradient so you literally just sub in what you have and the gradient is actually with a negative sign 0 0.038 so you end up with your answer is 1038.9 so if i round off to two sig fig because this is already two sig fig so maybe uh, the value will be about 10 uh 1000 cm per second square now likewise it's the same this g is your acceleration due to free fall so this is cm so if i change it to meter you know that it's 10 meter per second square which is what you learn in theory so you know that you're on the right track next let's talk about the y intersect now there's something that you need to pay attention is because here you jump the scale but you only jump one of the scale which is the vertical axis you start from 0 0.8 instead of 0 but on the other hand the horizontal scale you did not jump so it start from zero so will you this point here still be the y intersect and the value here is 2.12 and the answer is yes indeed this is still y intersect even though you jump your scale now just to give you a better idea just imagine if you did not jump your scale this graph actually is supposed to be higher it, because now if I start from 0 instead of 0 0.8 so this whole graph actually if I don't jump scale it will be higher and this will still be 2.12 it's the same so it's just that because I jump scale I bring it down lower down here because I start from 0 0.8 instead of 0 so this will still be 2.12 because you never jump the scale for the horizontal axis so I repeat again so this will still be your y intersect you can just read off directly so the y intersect in this case will be 2.12 and the units will be following here second square all right now for this the example is quite similar so you go about doing the usual thing to find your gradient and in this case 
okay like i said the units for the gradient you just take the units for the vertical axis which is v over the current a okay so it's v over okay to be exact is a here and but if you know v over i v over i is actually your resistance so if you know you can just write here ohms okay if you are not sure you just leave it here it's fine actually and the next thing is just to show you another example they just ask you to sub into this equation and you need to find your beta which is resistance per unit length so as usual the gradient with a negative sign you still have to put it in so it will cancel off all right and this l take note it will definitely be shown at the beginning of the practical where you use a ruler to measure and this one is 83 and because it's using a ruler so usually you have to write 83.0 and then you get the answer this is the resistance per unit length now the thing i want to highlight here is to find the y intersect for this uh, graph as you can see here you jump scale for both sides now in general if they requires you to find the y intersect sometimes they will give you the specified the scale to use or they will ask you to start from the origin start from zero you do not jump the scale so chances are when you draw it it may not be the best scale but it will allows you to pass through the y intersect let's say for some reason okay you get this graph and then they ask you to find the y intersect and you know that yours cannot cut through the uh, vertical axis and there's no way you can find the y intersect if you encounter this problem you cannot read off from the graph you can actually make use of your math to help you now if you remember y equals to mx plus c m is your gradient c is your y intersect so you really know your gradient which is from here do not forget your negative sign 12.4x plus c now what you need to do next is to sub in a value a coordinates on the line so i might as well just make use of my two points any of the points in the gradient let's say i use this so i just sub in the value 0 0.50 equals to minus 12.4 times the x axis uh, coordinate 0 0.220 plus c so from here you'll be able to find that this is 3.228 and finally leave your answer in about two or three sig fig okay so 3 will be good here and the coordinates are the units will be your vote so you can use this method that you learn in math to find the y intersect now for this last example it's not a straight line so obviously there won't be finding of the gradient so this is a best fit curve okay and one thing i want you i want to highlight here is when they ask you to find the value using your graph for example when h is 3.8 cm uh, sorry 38 cm so you know that it's over here 38 cm what is the value what's the time taken which you are supposed to read from the horizontal axis so there are certain presentation you are supposed to show on the graph and you must do that so for here when h is 38 you must draw the horizontal line touches the touches the graph the curve and you know that this one is until half you still have to follow that so from here you draw the vertical line all the way down and show the marker how you get your value so in this case is here is 30 so here will be 27 okay you can read up to half the smallest division from the graph so you just write the value here and this table here is a bit different so but nonetheless just follow since they put the units here and they want to know the time the time will be 27 and it will be seconds so for this case the table it is all right to write the unit since they put it here and just maybe another last example if h is 16 so once again 16 is over here make sure you draw the dotted line how you get the value so in this case it's very nice here and the value here will be here's 90 so the answer here is 88 seconds 
so that's how you read off from the graph when you're required to locate the points all right so i hope this video helps thank you for viewing all right